The countdown is on to Inauguration Day, and um, it's just happening, it's going to be happening in just 28 days. I'm joined now by senior correspondent Ayodele Zugbaku for more on the process of inauguration. Thank you for joining us on the countdown. Oh, We're back counting down, yes. you know, just after the election. So Nigeria has had uninterrupted handover since return to democracy in 1999. As a matter of fact, this is the eighth inauguration ceremony yes. since the beginning of the Fourth Republic. Uh, but all of this happened at a time where military takeovers have been a regular reoccurrence in Africa. I talk about Chad, Mali, Sudan, there have been failed coup attempts in even some other African countries. What does this say about where we are in our democracy? Since 1960, we've had um, several military interregnum and interruption in our democracy, and this has limited our democratic um, the, um, practice, and um, we've not been able to hold um, our heads high that we've practiced democracy back to back for this long. So respite came in 1999. And 1999 is the longest time in the history of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that we've practiced democracy and one administration after another has been handing over without interruption. Mm. So when you look at it, 99 to this time, back to back 20 something years and you can say this is the longest since our history since this country became independent mm. and we know that the instability that preceded 19 the post pre-1999 mm. era mm. it has set us back the democratic institutions that set us well the national assembly has been dissolved and we've had another national assembly being decreed there was a time that ibrahim babangida was the president and the national assembly was still running before it was you know it's one big mess mm. you know the military regime will remind you of just one central government somewhere and somebody issuing out decree order and everything but since 1999, we've um, enjoyed the bliss. It's something that is difficult. It's something that uh, some people would describe as slow, but a lot of people would say it's still the best form of governance mm. uh, across the world. 24 years is a long time to yes. solidify democracy, yes. and that's why mm. you it, it bothers you when you see people protest and say they want military intervention in 2020. No, because when you without look at recourse the, to what has happened in the past. Uh, because when you look at the average age of those people calling for the military, mm. you understand that um, maybe most, some of them were toddlers or some of them were not born mm. in, 19, in 1999. Absolutely. For those of us that um, we witnessed the June 12 crisis, that we had to go to um, you know Yaba with the Joint Action Committee that we went to the, the, uh, the military barracks with Chief Ganifa and me, will tell you that, look, even as a cop reporter in um, 2000, I'll tell you that that was when they described our democracy as still nascent. Mm -hmm. It's no longer nascent Absolutely. again. We've been nurturing it, and in the last 24 years, we've achieved this kind of stability. And the most important kind of stability that the bookmakers will say that we've been able to transit from one democratic, from one um, political party to another, to another political mm. party. It has been the domination of the People's Democratic Party since 1999, and PDP predicted that, oh, they could take this thing for 60 years, mm. on and on, not knowing that that 60 years and just then the shocker happened shot in 2015. Um, yes. You know, so, the defining moment, Ayo, on Inauguration Day, apart from taking the oath of office, is the inaugural speech of the incoming president. Yes. I, I, I'd like us to talk about that very quickly, particularly the speeches since 1999 uh, that stood out for you and how it went on to define the presidency of the president in question. In 2015, recall President Buhari saying, I belong to everyone and I belong to no one. How did that define his administration? The administration of that oath by mm -hmm. the chief justice of the country is just the high point of the program, the major program there. Mm -hmm. There's no other program scheduled for the inauguration day. And some inauguration we've seen, one hour, some inauguration, one hour, 30 minutes. Mm. After the vice president, the chief justice of, of the country will, co will come, administer for the vice president. After the vice president, the, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And then that's a powerful maiden speech. Mm. And that maiden speech, inaugural speech, is what we look forward to from 
any new president, mm -hmm. stemming from Abdul Salam to Obasanjo, the handing over in 1999, from Obasanjo to Umori Yaradua in 2007, mm -hmm. from Umori Yaradua to Good Luck Jonathan. And if you remember, sometimes the, uh, we, we, we didn't, we weren't privy mm -hmm. to the handing over to uh, Good Luck Jonathan the first time when no, Umori no, Yaradua died. It, was it wasn't a, 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 it wasn't a public um, event like that. Yeah. But at any point in time that they had to go to Eagle Square, that this, so a lot of Nigerians would come with their expectations that what will the president be about presidency be about what will be the anchor point for this presidency mm. so come may 29 a lot of nigerians that you know they followed the uh, uh, trajectory of president Muhammadu buhari in the last eight years mm. that when he said he belonged to everybody he belongs to nobody and at the end of the day a lot of nigerians are looking at oh we are going to hear, you know, a fresh breath of air with a Bola Tinobu as the president. And a lot of people are looking forward to what will the Tinobu presidency be like. Absolutely. So that inauguration day, a lot of people will be looking out for that inaugural speech, mm. what Tinobu is going to anchor its president on. You know, uh, uh, the president-elect has also given some speech. We were together at the APC National Headquarters in Abuja. We were there when he also uh, gave his acceptance speech at the ICC after he got his certificate of return. He's been talking about extending an olive branch to the opposition, saying, young people, I have heard you very clearly. But considering what we're going through as a nation, the issues of the economic of downturn, insecurity, all of these challenges, what do you think will be the key elements of this much talked about <laughs> inaugural speech on May 29. What are you expecting to hear? We've, I've never seen, as a practicing journalist, I've mm. never seen a country that has been as divided as the Federal Republic of Nigeria mm. right now. The country will be expecting the country, uh, the, the president, to heal the wound of a, a very big nation mm. called Nigeria. And uh, whatever he says will go a long way in assuaging, you know. When you look at the statistics of the presidential election, when you look at the numbers, you will discover that there were more people who did not vote more for him. People did not vote. Mm. More people did not participate in, you know, mm. and the number of people that actually turned up for the exercise mm. is going to be presiding over a divided nation. So they are looking for a unifier. Nigerians are looking for somebody that for the first time again, let's be, get our country back. South, yes, West, East, West, North, or South. Let's have a, a united Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're speaking with, you know, the, 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 a lot of, um, we, we, according to our party lineage, if you are this person, you are from this part of the country. If you are for this party, mm -hmm. you are from. So, above all, he has been elected as the 16th president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. His party affiliation is going to de-emphasize it right now. He's expected to be the father of, all. of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Including those the that president of Nigeria, him. 200 million Nigerians, mm. is, going to, is expected to be their president. He's not expected to do anything you know, that will favor his political party ahead of another political party. Absolutely. He's, you know, he's just going to, for the next four years, drop that partisan toga. Yeah. He has been voted for, elected in the office. So his first responsibility is to unite the country. And a lot of people will be looking at his appointments. They'll be looking at his appointments. They'll be looking at the election into the National Assembly. Mm. They'll be looking at the, you know, how it's going to be. In the last eight years, Nigerians, they've been divided about the, the, the pattern of appointment of President Bomodo Buari into Along the Air Force and ethnic you know, lines and different and the rest. ethnic lines and everything. Mm. So they are looking at it and they are saying that look, that this man has not done. Every, he did not try his best to define the country. Mm. So Nigerians are going to take a very close look. And at expect the him to do differently. Yes, exactly. We have to go now. Uh, 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 we're also looking forward to what they call the significance of his first move. For some reasons, in 2015, I mean, the moment President Buhari was inaugurated, remember there was just power all through and then people started tweeting about how their bottles were breaking in the fridge but then mm. it took the president some six months to put a cabinet together uh, we hope that all of that will be corrected in the coming days i was senior political correspondent thank you for joining us uh, on the inaugural episode 
of the countdown. Yes, 28 well, more days to go, but show sure that we have all of the in-depth review and analysis for you as we count down to the big day on May 29. Uh, watch out for a repeat 6 a.m. tomorrow, and we'll be back um, tomorrow at 6 p.m. for yet another edition. I am Nifemi Ogunto. -E.